justified when people are occupied. Resistance is justified when people are occupied. The resistance is justified for the Palestinian prisoners. With the Musqueam, Squamish, Solo, and Tsleil-Waututh people. All of this work we are doing together is deeply connected to the struggle against imperialism, colonialism, and for our collective liberation. Over the past four months, Israel has brought killing and destruction to the people of Gaza. It has displaced people, destroyed infrastructure, killed indiscriminately, created the conditions for famine and disease. And now, after they have displaced the people of Gaza to Rafa, uh, where they were told they would be safe, Israel plans to invade. So we have had some wins, like ousting Selena Robinson, Great losses for the people of Gaza continue. But especially as the violence intensifies, we need to maintain the struggle. We must bring an end to the Zionist project. Every day, it becomes increasingly clear to the world that this war was never about security. For Israel to exist, it needs both its own internal social cohesion as well as its external legitimacy. But this project called Israel is faltering. The only thing keeping it together is unity around the ongoing ethnic cleansing of Palestine. On October 6th, Israelis were deeply divided with thousands on the streets every night protesting the government. The logic of settler colonialism has led the Israeli government further and further to the right, towards racism and ethno-nationalism, apartheid and occupation. The only thing keeping these politically disparate groups of Israelis together is war and violence. But no state can sustain being at war forever. Externally, Israel is also losing its legitimacy. The unending moral, legal, and monetary support is finally beginning to crack. JC, set up in the wake of the Holocaust, has found plausible genocide committed by Israel. The Norwegian foreign minister has said that states exporting weapons to Israel should reassess whether they are effective partners in the genocide in Gaza. Even in the U.S., a record number of Congress people are speaking out for a ceasefire, despite political backlash from APAC and other Zionist lobby groups. The U.S. financial aid that props up the Israeli economy won't last forever. Workers in the West are beginning to question why so much is spent on death and destruction rather than health care and social services. We are not far from the moment where people across the globe will refuse to put their resources towards this genocidal campaign. Israel is disintegrating from within and without. Social legitimacy contribution is important. You are important. Your skills are valuable. Your labor is powerful. Unions are here to make political changes. The history of Rafa has not been decided. They can be one of the places where we play a long game so we can persevere to see a free Palestine, a free Congo, a free Sudan. We organize until every Palestinian fr prisoner is free and every Palestinian goes back to their land. Free Palestine! Thank you so much, Kayla. I think that your words meant a lot to all of us. But the majority of us are workers as well. And it's called freedom of speech. We're allowed to say whatever we want. Our next speaker is Sam Connolly of Independent Jewish Voices. Our friends at IGV have been part of so many actions across the country to confront Zionism. Sam, Sam is a Jewish settler of German European heritage. They are members of Independent Jewish Voices Vancouver and Labor for Palestine. Please give them a round of applause. Good afternoon, folks. For Palestine. We are grieving and also inspired. We trust our eyes and our guts. Our five boys have pinned Rajab. And with our own eyes, we have seen ambulances blown up. We 
heard doctors describe their kidnapping and torture. We've seen the dead bodies of beloved journalists. We have all heard Bissan's cries for help and seen children huddled together in tents in Rafa. Not accept this much inequality, this much greed, atrocity, and abuse of power. And you're all here because you will not accept this injustice either. And like me, you're turning to the collective. <laughs> Workers and unions in Palestine have called on us. And many unions all over the world have answered back, have blockaded and refused to take part in arming Israel and put economic pressure on our governments, the only kind they really seem to understand. We cannot let them do that alone. We are safest and most powerful when we take risks together to expose and oppose the role of the Canadian state and its complicity with Israel in 1973. My mother's family were European communists and my grandfather was president of the Carpenters Union here in BC for 18 years. A decade ago, some of the elders in my family became disillusioned with the labor movement and took a step back. But I am picking up the torch. The cruelty and the tyranny in Palestine changed everything for me. While I recognize that the labor movement has largely been asleep the last few years, the soul of it is still there. It needs new breath, new life. It needs this broader, deeper solidarity. Kyla from Labor for Palestine in Vancouver. I stand here as a member of the Vancouver chapter of Labor for Palestine. My